Well, Courtney Heading is joining us again, and you might say, again? Because, Courtney, you have been with us a fair amount of times. Vaccines, the, the, the perceived dangers you, you, you want to keep highlighting. Yep. You're back because you've got some actually more uh, events happening on the Isle of Man. So yep. we'll come to that in a second. But you're banging on, aren't you, constantly yeah, yeah. about where we are with vaccines and I have to before we start I said yeah. please don't get me in any trouble because obviously they've got big lawyers yeah, yeah, yeah. on their side yeah. and those sort no, of they things. Have, they have, yeah. Can we keep it more general as yeah. possible though? I mean again for people who haven't seen the rest of these things um, have you got any added to what we've already said on this or is it is it basically the same message you're still putting out? That no I'd say, about it's, I'd say it's increased I went I had a call over the weekend but also been to some events in the UK and I used to say it was harms in 20 countries I think it's harms in 40 countries there were uh, patient groups of harms around the HPV vaccine. That's the one I'm really focused on more than any other. Because on official figures, the yellow card in UK has had twice the adverse effects. So when people report in there's been a harm, it goes on an official database. But generally, if you look, perhaps only one in a hundred harms is reported. So this is an underreporting of, I think, a massive problem. And the constituents, the ingredients in the vaccine are the issue, the adjuvants and other other products. They, they've changed over the years, right? I mean, yep. when we were young, it was less in there, is, and, and they've added to less it. Is less, well, it's what I'm saying now, if you look at it, and HPV is almost the latest in the line, it's ever more, ever closer together, ever sooner. So mothers now are getting flu vaccines when they're pregnant, particularly in the States, and what happens there comes here, and you're getting earlier vaccines in greater amount put into the baby, often four or five vaccines in one visit. And I don't think we fully understand the immune system. And those problems are playing out through schools, through anaphylaxis, through issues around autoimmunity that we didn't see when I was a kid. So we had things like peanut, peanuts, allergies, and those sort of things. You, you uh, going down to those sort of things well, even? If peanut. you look in 1974, uh, the UK approved a peanut adjuvant in a vaccine. And so when people say that, and they then link up to the increased number of vaccines kids are getting, and the intolerance of some babies to milk, when you look at where casein is used in in vaccine preparation, you just can we ask that question? And HPV is without doubt the most toxic of all the vaccines. You're going to scare some people again here, though. People are thinking, oh, my baby's about to have I, a, I the had vaccine. That, I had that last what night. I had that last night from, from a GP. And, um, a GP? We, yeah, we can't avoid these intelligent conversations. We can't avoid them. So we have to ask three clear questions on HPV. Let's just stick with that, apart from the fact that in the 60s, we had three vaccines, literally. In 83, you had about 10, and now an American kid will have 40 plus the flu vaccine. How many? So 40, 40. So I'll give you the list. You can yes. uh, come on later. Um, so the three questions very clearly on HPV would be, is it effective? First question, are they cancer-producing vaccines or a cancer-reducing vaccine, the first ever? So HPV, has it had a clinical trial to show that it stopped cancers? No, it hasn't. So any doctor that says it has, say, show me the trial. What it was done, it was done in a trial that showed it prevents CIN3 lesions, cer cervical lesions, that might go on to produce cancer. That's the first thing. So it isn't effective to prevent cancer, first question. Second question was, is it safe? In the trial, they didn't use what they call an inert placebo, so something that would be a saline in one control group and then give the other group the active uh, vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't do that. They used aluminium in both of them. An aluminium adjuvant is neurotoxic, it's been known since the 20s to be not suitable to be injected in the body, and that process has been denied. So safety, it didn't have an inert placebo, it had a comparator. So on safety, big doubt that the harms were covered up. And the third point is, is it value? Well, the driving down of 90% of cervical cancer using pap screens is well proven, effective and safe. Cervical cancer is a three in 100,000 occurrence in women. A very rare cancer, it's not top 20 according to Richard Halverson, who wrote the book, Vaccines, A Parent's Guide. So it's a rare cancer. And in the words of Shelley Brogan from America, uh, Kelly Brogan, I should say, she's a women's doctor and she says the maternal instinct has been hijacked. So you haven't got an effective vaccine, you haven't got a safe vaccine, and you haven't got a vaccine that's uh, of value because it costs about a hundred pounds a dose. So when you have those two doses, it's for perhaps one in 10,000 girls that goes on to produce cancer from HPV infection. The infection generally clears, and we've got this whole disease mongering to quote a Max doctor, and we're not looking at effectiveness, safety, and cost. And we're not debating it. Okay. And I must again point out yep. that this is your view on this, and this is Pers this is your thing. Completely personal view. And there were people with no, with no medical training. No, but there, and you say you've got a doctors who don't agree with you, and mm -hmm. you know, yep. so they're the medical people, they know more about what they're dealing with, no, or not? 
Uh, if you look at the tainted blood scandal currently going through the courts, that took 30 years for what Andy Burnham called an industrial cover-up on a whole-scale basis. He's asked for a criminal investigation, so 30 years. Smoking, tobacco, that took 40 years. Glyphosate's taken two decades, that's done, just gone through the US courts. So all the things we did, whether it be bloodletting or thalidomide, or these things take a long while to come out, but once you have the power of the internet and 40 groups, and the first court uh, sanctioned, uh, US death in America of Christina Tarsell from HPV vaccine, people don't see this. They don't dig in. They, they accept the uh, mantra that comes in their industry journal, but say, so what was the trial? Did you meet the lead trialist? Yes, I have. Did you see things that that person didn't know? Because the ingredients in the vaccine are kept in separate silos. And it's that issue, particularly with doubling the aluminium in the next stage of Gardasil, that's the issue. You're either out on a limb or you're at the beginning of something that's going to be massive by sounds this still, you know, because you're, you're banging on about this mm -hmm. and, and you're hitting resistance. I'm taking it from never from lawyers. <laughs> amongst, well, no, 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 the no, 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 He's autopsied a lot of brains and found something that he didn't think was there, and that's aluminium in brains, and it's aluminium adjuvant from vaccine. So that's a key person to get here. He's, he's been all over the world, he's world famous. So bring the experts in here. We're not out the limb with lawyers. I've got people so far coming from five countries, so certainly from Switzerland, Spain, England, USA, and uh, Scotland. And once we put those together, other lawyers are taking an interest in where this goes. So two lawyers, I would actually uh -huh. like to bring in lawyers, Mary Holland and Kim Mac Rosenberg, they've just written the book, launched in uh, October this year, and it's called The HPV Vaccine on Trial, A Generation Betrayed. So I met those ladies in Dublin, I spoke at a conference there, and they are world class in their research, 510 pages. Why can't we point people to that book and discuss it? as to where their evidence takes us. And will you be getting people from health and social care on the stage to debate this with uh, you? It, unlikely. I've been to a couple of homes recently for ministers and others, and uh, meeting notes are no longer available. They were lost from meeting last year um, with Education Department, uh, and others that were not published meetings from Health Review, meetings that I've challenged these in. So we're an interesting... You're not alleging a cover-up here, are you? No. Oh, Heaven no, forbid. Clumsy. We, clumsy. We lose, I lost okay. loads of things. I lost loads, but I haven't lost my uh, polio vaccine um, <laughs> card. <laughs> Because from 1958, my wife's the greatest fool in the world. So I'm not anti-vax. I want clean vaccines. I want people to understand that bovine cells, calf cells, murine cells, pig cells have no place in vaccines. And can we discuss yeast, casein, peanut in vaccines and have an independent open-minded review? The reason I like wearing this TT top yeah. is because one day the TT hopefully will survive, but other things may come on. So truth tellers. This yeah. island could be the sacred space to hold that truth and just say, let's debate. No name calling, no discussion. It'd be fascinating to, to no see where this goes. Angling. No. And that's so one event at the Manx Museum. Uh, you got two, two others, though. Yeah, then the next morning at the Mountain View Innovation Centre. I live in Ramsey. I like walking to work. So, Mountain View, we will show um, the film Sacrificial Virgins, and that's uh, 15 minutes of a patient journey. It's very tragic. And then we'll have Sherry Tenpenny speaking. She's a world expert, 30,000 hours research on vaccines. So she's coming from the US. And that's 10 o'clock at Mountain View Innovation Center. Then in the afternoon, quickly back down to the Manx Museum uh, for 12.30. So parents, mothers, concerned girls, boys, because now they want to vaccinate boys. Right. So the, the harms, I think, will double quite quickly, tragically. You've got funding behind you for this, I'm taking it. Though. Me. Me and my wife. What is making you, what is driving you? Uh, Several things. One, when I was eight, my dad said in life, you're on your own. I'm sure that would be child abuse now, but I thought it was quite a good backbone. It said, remember, son, in life, you're on your own. So that drove me. Deaths of friends. Uh, people who've been on 10 medicines, having started on, sadly, the ultimate gateway drug of a statin, and they suicided. That was the husband of a friend of mine. I've just put that forward to uh, the Home Affairs Review Committee about statins. So I've got several bugbears. And when I look at health, I think we can't afford health anymore. We've done health. We cannot afford it. We have to go back to wellness, right. and every measure is you go in as a person, you come out as a patient. We, we've lost that understanding of the human body, and that drives me because okay. people get injured, I'm very lucky. People, people want to get tickets or more information, where, you, where do we send them? Courtney at Jerby Wellness. I am Courtney, unusual spelling, C-O-U-R-T-E-N-A-Y, at yeah. Jerby Wellness. I am, or my mobile, people know where I live, 07624 424 455.